Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Austin, and welcome back to Game Programming in Unity 3D. In this part, we're going to be actually writing a C-sharp script. It's going to be a very, very basic one. We'll learn a little bit of syntax, but we're just going to be talking about uh, what a namespace is, what a class is, how to define one, how to inherit from another class. Then we'll be getting into a variable, and then we'll be getting into methods. All simple stuff and all key components of programming. But if you don't know that stuff, I want to be able to teach it to you. I want you to know it after this video. So let's get started. When we left off last time, we had this. We didn't do anything. We created a scripts folder. And now I'm going to go, and on that scripts folder, I want to create a C-sharp script. We're going to be working in C-sharp, no JavaScript, no Boo script. Sorry, but C sharp is just better, so we're gonna do that. C sharp script. We're gonna call this demo. And over here in the inspector, now that this is selected, you can see what this script contains. But we're gonna delete all that. So I'm gonna double click on that actual script. It'll open it up in mono develop. Now in this version of Unity, if you have the newer versions, you will have the new version of mono develop. It's Still pretty much sucks, but it's simple to use. It's integrated, so I uh, use it. We're going to be deleting all of this and typing that up as if it wasn't there. So the first thing is, we're writing a script in Unity 3D. Now this is live in Unity 3D, so if I save this, it'll save it to that script, right? And if I attach this script to an object as a component, which we'll get into, then this code will be attached to that object very important very simple and if you've heard of object-oriented programming it doesn't mean anything more anywhere else than it does in unity it is definitely object-oriented programming okay so the first thing we have to do is we have to tell uh, our script our class that we are going to be using the unity engine namespace now this namespace contains a lot of classes and methods and stuff that the unity engine provides and we can use that without saying that we're using that, but we have to define the namespace every time we use a method from the uh, from the namespace. And that's not ideal, so we'll just tell it up front, hey, we're gonna be using Unity Engine, and now we don't have to define that namespace every time we use a method. I will explain this a bit more when we get into something that actually requires that, but for now, that's the only explanation I can give. The next thing is we're gonna be using now using is just saying it's using a namespace, right? So whatever you put after that will be the namespace you use. So now we're gonna be using system.collections. Now what system.collections gives you access to would be uh, arrays, hash tables, uh, different interfaces that we'll be using throughout these series. Now that is set up, what we have to do now is start a class. The first thing we have to do is determine if the class is gonna be a public class which means it's accessible from other classes, right? From other scripts. And we do that with an access modifier. So this one's gonna be public, we're gonna say public. Now we're gonna set a class. So that just says we are defining a class here. In this case, the name of the class has to match the name of the file, which is demo. So demo is the name of the class. Now we could just block this out and say, okay, we're done with that class. The class is, it works now. Whenever this class is used from an object, the stuff inside of it can be called. We can use the stuff inside this class. But we have to inherit from mono behavior if we want to use a lot of the stuff available in the Unity engine, right? Mono behavior is a class inside of the Unity engine namespace. So the way we inherit a class f within a class is we do a colon and then we say the name of that class. In this case, it's mono behavior. If you get the class right and it, it's a built-in class, then it will use the syntax highlighting and light it up blue. That means you got the class right. If it's one of your own classes, it won't know that that's a real class, so it may not be blue, right? Not a big deal. But what's happening here is mono behavior contains a lot of methods, a lot of stuff that you can use. And I have a list over here I can show you. Won't make any sense right now, but if you want to later on, go to uh, the documentation and search for mono behavior. You'll get a list of all the, the functions or methods that are available. You'll get a list of all this stuff that's available. And it's a lot of stuff that you need. A 
a lot of stuff you need. So now the demo class can access the stuff within Mono Behavior. Now inheritance works like it sounds like it should work. It's inheritance. So if demo inherits from Mono Behavior, I can make another class that inherits from demo, and by laws of inheritance, it will inherit Mono Behavior, right? This is how inheritance works. It cascades down. It's very important. The next thing we're going to do is set up a variable. Now, a variable is like in algebra, x equals something, right? So x equals 5. That's a variable. Now, that, now x holds the value of 5. You can modify x and change x, but x will always have started out equaling 5, and then you modify it, right? So x holds a value of something. So that's the same thing with this. But with variables, we also have to identify whether it's going to be public or private. Now, private means it's not accessible from outside of its class, so it'll be accessible within this class, but outside of it, not so much. Public means you can access it from another script, and it will be available in the Unity Inspector. This one will be public. The type of variable is also important. This is going to be an integer, which is a whole number, right? It can be other things. But for now, we're going to be focusing on integer. INT is how you define an integer. And next comes the name of that variable. The name of this variable is going to be health. So we're just say like player health. It's not going to do anything, but it's definitely going to give us something to work with, right? So we have public int of health. Now, I said a public variable can be available in the Unity Inspector. What, what does that mean? So I hit Control S on this. It'll save it. We come back in here. Now I have demo here, and you can see that it's updated over here. If I create an object, now a game object in Unity will be, appear in the scene here, wherever we place it, and also in the hierarchy. And if we click on the object, we'll see some information about it. So I want a game object. Now Unity has some prefabricated game objects for us to work with for prototyping or just getting a game done quickly, right? I want to create a cube. Here's my cube. If I double click on it in the hierarchy, it'll take me into it just like that. You can see over here, I can see all of the components that are attached to this cube. Everything in Unity is just an empty game object with components attached to it. So if I deleted all of these components, you would just see nothing. But it would still be there. It would still be in that point of space, but it wouldn't be anything, right? It would just be a point in space. So if I turn off the mesh renderer, it no longer renders the mesh, which is the, the graphic, the, the size you saw on that cube. And the green is the box collider, which is part of the physics of Unity. It's like a hitbox. You think of a hitbox in like an FPS game. You shoot a bullet, and it if it hits the, the box that's around the player, then that player gets hit. That's what this is. It detects collisions all around it. Turn that off, it goes away. Well, I can hide it and make it go all, make it go away altogether. So what we have now is the cube mesh filter. Now that's just if we can change this, we can change this to a, a capsule. And if we turn the mesh renderer back on, now it's a capsule. That's all that is. So when we have a player, so we have a player model, we'll use the mesh filter of a, the player model. Pretty cool. Now transform is a component that is very important. It contains the position, rotation, and scale information for all the objects in Unity. Now this is positioned at an odd point, so I want to zero out these positions with X, Y, and Z. Now it's at the, z at the zero point of the world, right here, in the middle of the grid. Now the scale is 1, so it's, it's a scale of 1, 1, so if I was to make this like a 10, it would be 10 times the size, right? And that's how scale works. Rotation works the same way, you rotate it on the different axes, X, Y, and Z. And we can just go here and reset this one, and it reset it back the way it was by default. Pretty cool. Now we can take this cube, and we can drop a script on it. So we have the cube here, we can drop a script here, we can drop a script here. What this will do is add a component of the demo class. So I'll drop that there, it added the demo script to it. And we can see the health variable here is public. It's an integer, so it's a number. It starts at zero because it's not defined as anything. And with it being an integer, I have this cool drag mouse thing that pops up here, and I can drag the integer, set it to a different value. I can type in a different value, so 15. He has 15 health. 
and then I can take the health, remove health from it later on, and when it gets down to zero, he dies. We'll do that next time. That's it for this video. Hope you learned something. It was pretty quick, but I want to get all this out of the way so we can get to some fun stuff, right? This stuff is important. Without this stuff, you won't be able to do the fun stuff. You got to get through this first. My name is Austin, and I'll see you next time.